the past two decades, um, <clears throat> my focus has been education and outreach in order to help people transition to clean, non-polluting, self-supporting ecosystems. Uh, I was inspired by my irritation with the mainstream media and their constant mantra of saying how we needed to find alternative sources of energy. You know, people who were around in the 80s probably noticed that they were always talking about running out of fossil fuels and things about, you know, worries about nuclear power, things of that sort. And what, what irritated me the most was that they would never discuss any of the viable options. They'd always talk about this impending problem and they would, they would never pre present any of the solutions. Of course, I, I knew about a lot of different technologies that existed um, <clears throat> that made sense, uh, like solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, and hydroelectric generators. Um, and it became so painful to my ears to hear them say we need to find alternative sources without mentioning the ones we already had. So painful that I decided to dedicate the rest of my life to letting people know about the alternative choices and how to take a hold of them in a way that made financial sense. And at the time, I, I thought just making people aware of the alternatives would be a life's work. You know, because back then, almost nobody knew. When you talk about solar photovoltaics, or you talk about wind generators and things like that, well, almost everyone was completely ignorant of the technologies that they existed. They didn't know anything about geothermal. You would say solar, and they would say, where's the hot water? Um, and now, here we are less than two decades later, and I don't think there's a person in the country that isn't aware of the existence of these clean technologies and the fact that they work. Now the big challenge is clarifying for them the fact that they're actually cheaper than the dirty sources that we use, the dirty sources like nuclear, coal, and fossil fuels, and that they're easily, easily taken a, take a hold of and that they can reduce their expenses right now with them and switch over from the dirty sources. Um, and make no mistake, as Alex Jones would say, this is an information war, and once people have the information, we will have won the war. Recently, Obama approved an initial round of funding of over $8 billion to build two new nuclear reactors. The initial reports indicate that these reactors will produce about two gigawatts of energy and have a deployment cost of about $16 billion before they start producing energy uh, optimistically in the next five years. Um, and this translates to approximately $8 a watt per watt of generating capacity before including any of the long-term maintenance, operation, waste disposal, and health costs that you heard uh, Joseph talk about before. To put this in perspective, solar photovoltaics is arguably the most expensive of the options I mentioned previously. When comparing it against wind, tidal energy, or hydro, uh, or, ge or geothermal, um, it costs nearly twice as much to deploy in large-scale formats. But right now, without any federal or state incentives, what that translates into is $4.20 a watt for small-scale deployments, which is already half the initial deployment cost of a nuclear facility. And for large-scale deployments, on the utility scale, you're looking at about $3.50 a lot. Solar has an expected life of 40 years, which is nearly twice that of a nuclear reactor. And it is clean, it's non-polluting, with none of the potential catastrophic risks associated with meltdown and nuclear waste or with, uh, with mercury contamination due to the use of coal and other dirty sources of energy. So what we're left with after doing the math is the fact that solar is half the cost, begins producing energy within six months of site selection. Unlike nuclear, which typically takes 10 years to begin producing energy after beginning construction. This is the math, and this is why New Jersey's solar industry has now installed over 640 megawatts, and is now producing more usable energy than Oyster Creek. By the end of this year, we will have more than one gigawatt of installed capacity. And at our current pace, we will have two gigawatts installed and operational by 2014. Wind costs approximately $2 per watt for large-scale deployments and four to six dollars for small scale, with the bulk of those costs being bureaucratic. And it's very challenging to get townships to let you put up a 120 foot tower in your backyard. 
Uh, if you live on a 50-acre farm, rural area, then you probably won't have much of a challenge there. Um, <clears throat> hydroelectric turbines typically cost about $1.50 for large-scale deployments and about $2.50 a lot for small-scale deployments. Um, <clears throat> the reason why solar is currently dominating all of the other energy sources in terms of growth and deployment figures uh, has to do largely with the ease of deployment. The sun shines everywhere, but not everyone has a town that will let them put up that 120-foot tower. Like I said, not everyone has a, a river or a water resource that's capable of driving a hydroelectric uh, generator, and not everyone lives uh, next to the ocean where they can tap into the tidal energy sources that, are, that exist there. And not everyone has a magmatic core that's close enough to the surface that they can tap into it geothermally. Solar systems are also modular, and they can be deployed on any scale, whether it's powering a cell phone or powering a, uh, an entire manufacturing facility. It, and like I said, it has an expected life of in excess of 40 years. There's no moving parts. Typically, the, the panels come with 25-year warranties. And they're just simply cheap. Panels that were made in 1954 at the advent of, this, of the current technology that's being used um, are still in service today. Every day, we vote with our dollars when we pay our energy bills on the type of energy that we want. Today, we can switch to clean, non-nuclear energy and save money doing it. It is actually cheaper to use clean sources than dirty sources. With deregulation, uh, you can now have your own clean generator installed at your property. Or if you don't own the roof, you can change your supplier. You actually have the option to switch over to a supplier which has no nuclear energy in its, in its energy mix in the portfolio which it supplies you with. And oftentimes you can actually save money, even in that scenario, you ultimately reduce your energy costs by, uh, by somewhere around 2 to 5%. Just by choosing a different energy supplier that doesn't have nuclear energy in its, in its resource base. And, uh, and you can also, some of them have a 100% renewable portfolio, which is just simply wind and solar and uh, hydropower and things of that sort. So there, there's actually a, a very large selection out there. The, the biggest challenge that we have is letting people know that these options are available and that they can begin switching over to them right now. Um, <clears throat> my chosen battleground for shutting down the nuclear plants has been by stripping it of the money it needs to continue poisoning us. So, and this is how we do it. We do it by, we've got to stop paying for it. We've got to stop choosing. Every month we're choosing to use dirty sources of energy. And it really is as simple as taking the time to select a different source of energy. You can eliminate your electric bills now with clean energy and you can do it cheaper. A lot of people are concerned about initial deployment costs. There are incentive programs out there and there are financing programs out there. We, uh, just this week we took someone who, who was using standard utility energy and we converted them over to a clean energy system. They cut their electric bills immediately by 20%. They're now paying 20% less than the utility company charges for energy. They had no upfront out-of-pocket expense, and they're saving money, and they're using clean energy doing it. The biggest challenge we have is stripping these companies of their money. And unfortunately, every single nuclear reactor that's put in, been put in service in, in this country uh, required two things in order to be put in service. They required governmental waivers of liability and huge government subsidies. I mean, they literally steal the money from us. I'm not a willing participant in that. They take it from us and they give it over to them, like this $8 billion that was just given to build these two nuclear plants. So they take this money and they give it to them. So mm -hmm. on that front, on that political front, where we have politicians literally stealing money from us in order to create systems that poison us by default, uh, we have to be more aware of what candidates are out there and what their position on these issues is. And that's why we need to start appointing people into these positions that respect in individual liberties and individual freedoms. But ones that, that have never voted for subsidies for nuclear plants. Ones that have never voted for waivers of liability. That would never support those types of things. That have always stood on, on the side of policies that, that stand diametrically opposed to the, to the deployment of nuclear plants. Right now, I'm aware of one candidate who's running in the presidential election right now, who, who meets that description, who has never ever voted in, in favor of nuclear, has never voted for a waiver of liability, 
has never voted for a subsidy of a new, of the, for the deployment of a nuclear plant, and his name is Ron Paul. The censorship in the media is, uh, is challenging. Uh, obviously, GE has a controlling interest in a number of the, of the major media outlets. Uh, not just NBC or CBS or CNN, but also a lot of print publications. And they also have an interest in deploying uh, nuclear facilities. A lot of these facilities are their design. They make money from it. So you can't expect them to advertise on their advertisement outlets the fact that they're dangerous, the fact that they're dirty, the fact that they're not safe, the fact that infant mortality rates are increasing, that they're on the rise. It's up to us to find sources that they're actually discussing these things. It's up to us to do research and verify the, sub the substantive nature of it. And then after we verified it, to take action, and I'm glad to see everyone out here taking action. And, and I, I see this as a battle that, that has been won. And we just need to continue at our current pace. The, the nuclear industry will collapse. As I said, solar and other clean technologies are on the rise, and it's because they're simply cheaper and people are waking up to it. Thank you. Thank you.